In this video, we're going to look at the conformations and the conformational energy diagram for butane, the linear 4-carbon alkane. The potential energy diagram for linear butane is a bit more complicated than the propane and ethane diagrams that we've seen already. And it's shown on this slide, and I want to point out a couple of interesting things before we dig into the details. One of the most interesting things here is that there are now apparently different staggered and eclipsed conformations. For example, there's an eclipsed conformation here that is the overall energy maximum, but there are local maxima that are a bit lower in energy here and here, and these appear to be equal in energy to each other. On the staggered side, at the en energy minima, we have a global minimum here, and that same global minimum is shown here when we rotate all the way back around 360 degrees. But we have these two other staggered conformers that are a bit higher in energy than that global minimum, and they're not the same as this structure. And so butane, primarily because of the two methyl groups now uh, on either carbon, has different staggered and eclipsed conformations and a bit more complexity in, in its conformational energy diagram. For example, here there are two energy barriers, 16 kilojoules per mole to go from this structure to this structure, and 19 kilojoules per mole to go from this structure to this structure. So there are two different barriers, and there is an energy difference here between these minima of about 3.8 kilojoules per mole. So why does this happen, and how do we think about it? That's what we're going to look at in the ensuing slides. Let's start by looking in a bit more detail at the energy minima, the staggered conformations of butane. Linear butane has three distinct staggered conformations. One is called anti, and the other two are called gauche, for reasons we'll see in a second. The anti-conformer is the global minimum in energy. This is the most stable conformation. And in this conformation, the dihedral angle between the carbon-methyl bonds in the front and back in a Newman projection is 180 degrees. So this 180-degree dihedral refers to the angle between these two methyl groups in red, the two methyl groups on the end of, ends of the four-carbon chain. And notice that if we compare this to the other two staggered conformers, the methyl groups are relatively far apart. That's what makes this conformation relatively stable. There's essentially no steric interaction between these two uh, methyl groups. In the other two staggered conformers, the methyl groups are closer together. And in these, the dihedral angle between the two carbon-methyl bonds is now 60 degrees in both of these. These are known as gauche. Gauche always makes me think of this idea of being awkward, and these conformations are a bit awkward in the sense that there's a steric interaction between the two methyl groups. And you may look at these and think to yourself, well, they look very similar, right? Is this just the same conformation drawn two different ways? They're actually not the same. Each of these is individually chiral, and these two conformers are enantiomeric. And we're going to return to this point later after we've talked about stereochemistry in the next unit. But for the time being, take my word for it, two gauche conformers both have this 60-degree dihedral, and because they have the same dihedral angle and they are enantiomers, they're at the same energy. And they're about 3.8 kilojoules in energy, higher, higher in energy than the anti-conformer. What we can say then is, you know, arguing that there's essentially no interaction here, no repulsive interaction between the methyl groups here, and there is a repulsive interaction between the methyl groups in these gauche conformers, that steric repulsion in the gauche conformer is worth, quote unquote, about 3.8 kilojoules per mole or 0.91 kilocalories. And we can refer to this as the gauche interaction energy. When we've got two methyl groups at a 60 degree dihedral angle like this, this is referred to as a methyl-methyl gauche interaction, and that incurs an energetic penalty of about 0.91 kilocalories. And as you might imagine, as we go from methyl to ethyl, propyl, butyl, tert butyl, other groups here are going to be associated with different energies. But these kinds of methyl-methyl interactions, it's a nice kind of benchmark for the energetic penalty associated with this 60 degree dihedral, about one kilocalorie, about four kilojoules or so. There are three distinct eclipsed conformations of butane as well, and in these eclipsed conformations, we're going to recognize some new types of eclipsing interactions. We've previously seen CH bonds eclipsing each other and developed an, uh, an argument for the idea that that's worth a penalty of about four kilojoules or one kilocalorie for CHCH eclipsing. But because butane has these methyl groups linked to the front and back carbons, we'll, we will also see in these eclipsed conformations 
CH3H and CH3CH3 eclipsing interactions, which are going to have different energetic penalties, if you like, associated with them. And we can imagine three distinct eclipse conformations of butane, two of which are enantiomeric, similar conceptually to the gauche conformers here, and one of which is distinct from these enantiomeric eclipsed conformations. And we can sort of group them into a conformation where the two methyl groups are eclipsing each other, where the, the dihedral angle between the carbon methyl bonds is zero degrees, and the other two eclipsed structures where those two methyl groups are eclipsing hydrogens. So the dihedral angle between the carbon methyl bonds in these is 120 degrees. Now, if we think about the energy barriers and, and the energies associated with each of these eclipsed conformers, we can infer the energies associated with methyl-methyl and methyl-hydrogen eclipsing. For example, if we look at the global energy maximum, which has the two carbon methyl bonds eclipsing each other, that is about 19 kilojoules per mole higher than the global energy minimum. So the total energy cost of this structure is 19 kilojoules per mole. We already know how much each of those CHCH eclipsing interactions is worth, 4 kilojoules per mole right? Four kilojoules per mole for this interaction and four for this interaction. And so from this total energy of 19 kilojoules and the CHCH eclipsing interactions being worth eight kilojoules per mole, we can infer that the methyl-methyl eclipsing is worth about 11 kilojoules per mole or about two and a half kilocalories. N uh, naturally, this is a higher number than the CHCH eclipsing because the methyl groups are larger, so there's going to be more of an energetic penalty when these larger groups are relatively close to one another. Now, in the two other eclipsed conformations, the CH3 groups are eclipsing hydrogens rather than each other, and the dihedral angle between the carbon-methyl bonds is 120 degrees. And again, just to point this out, these are enantiomeric, so they're not quite the same. Although, because they're enantiomers, they have the same energy. And we can think about, for example, the steric interactions in both exactly the same way. If we do a similar analysis here to get an idea of the energy associated with the methyl-hydrogen eclipsing interactions, well, we've got two of those in each of these eclipsed conformers. And we've got one CHCH, or hydrogen-hydrogen eclipsing interaction. That one hydrogen-hydrogen eclipsing interaction is worth four kilojoules. The total energy here relative to the global minimum is uh, 16 kilojoules per mole. And so the energy due to each one of these CH3H, or methyl-hydrogen eclipsing interactions, is 16 kilojoules minus four kilojoules divided by two, because we've got two of these interactions. And that comes out to six kilojoules, or about one and a half kilocalories. So again, this is larger than the hydrogen-hydrogen eclipsing interaction energy we previously found, four kilojoules, slightly larger, slightly higher, because CH3 is bigger than H. So we'll look at a slide here shortly where we put these eclipsing interactions all on one slide and compare them, but the basic idea here is that because the CH3 group is larger than H, this eclipsing interaction is going to incur more of an energetic penalty than an eclipsing interaction involving two hydrogens. This slide is the one that shows all of the eclipsing and gauche interactions we've discussed so far. So with ethane, propane, and in butane as well, we saw these CHCH eclipsing interactions. Those are worth about 0.96 kilocalories per mole, roughly speaking, one kilocalorie per mole or four kilojoules per mole. When we replace H with a larger CH3, we're up to about one and a half kilocalories per mole or six kilojoules per mole. When we replace the other H with CH3, so that now we've got a methyl-methyl eclipsing interaction, we're up at about two and a half kilocalories per mole. And now we have torsional strain and a steric interaction between the methyls as those CH bonds within the methyl groups start to bump into each other as these groups are, are larger than H's. And although this is not an eclipsing interaction, there is an energetic penalty with the methyl groups not being anti, being in a gauche orientation or a 60 degree dihedral angle. And this really comes down to a steric interaction between the CH3 groups. And that's associated with an energy of about 3.8 kilojoules per mole or about 0.9 kilocalories. So it's actually somewhat less than the 0.96 associated with hydrogen-hydrogen eclipsing 
But nonetheless, this is going to be associated with the higher energy of gauche staggered conformers relative to the global energy minimum, which is that anti-conformer. Let's practice with conformational analysis by identifying the highest energy and lowest energy conformations of this compound with respect to rotation around the indicated bond. So this arrow is telling us we want to look at the molecule from this perspective and think about rotation around this bond that I've highlighted in red. And here, as I recommended previously, it's a great idea to go ahead and draw in the implied hydrogens with wedges and dashes on the carbons involved in this bond of interest because we're going to lay down those hydrogens when we move into a Newman projection view, which we're going to do now. Pretty much any time you're doing conformational analysis, you want to work with Newman projections. That's going to make torsional angles extremely easy to visualize and bond rotations relatively easy to handle. So what we're going to do is actually walk through all of the staggered and eclipsed conformations of this compound with respect to rotation around the indicated bond and identify the global energy maximum and minimum, pointing out these strains, torsional strains and, and steric interactions between groups larger than hydrogen that are going to destabilize the relatively unstable conformers. Okay, so let's start by drawing a Newman projection for this molecule in this conformation as drawn. So we'd see, for example, a right side up Y shape on the front carbon and an upside down Y on the back carbon. So the Newman template I'm going to use looks something like this. It's also a good idea to number the carbons. This is going to help us keep track of what's in the front, what's in the back, where are groups going as we rotate around. So I've gone ahead and done that here, numbered the six carbon backbone, one through six, and then this methyl carbon, carbon seven. And in terms of laying these groups down on the template, I'm going to have this ethyl group, carbons 1 and 2, down here. And in the back, on the back carbon, I'm going to have carbons 5 and 6, that ethyl group up here. I'm going to have two hydrogens in the back, there and there. That's these two hydrogens right here. And carbon 7 is going to be up and to the right if I'm looking at the molecule from this perspective. So it's going to be sitting right there, and a hydrogen will be sitting right here. So this is the Newman projection we get, and it's again a good idea to go ahead and lay down the numbers. So the front carbon from our perspective is carbon 3, so that ethyl group corresponding to carbons 1 and 2 is in the front. There's carbon 3 right in the middle. Carbon 4 is in the back, right? Carbons 3 and 4 are sitting directly on top of each other in this Newman projection view. And so carbon 4 is in the back, carbon 5 and 6 are that ethyl group in the back, and carbon 7 is our methyl group linked to the front carbon from this perspective. All right, so now let's think about rotating around. And I think here I'm going to rotate around the front carbon, yes. So what I'm going to do is leave carbons 4, 5, and 6 completely fixed, leave the two hydrogens at the back carbon completely fixed, and just think about rotating around, doing torsion such to move the groups at the front carbon only. That's torsion, right? We can leave the back carbon fixed and just rotate the front carbon. We're wringing out the towel, so to speak. Okay, so what's happened here? Well, I took carbon 7 and I rotated it around like this. That's going to rotate the ethyl group up here, and that's going to rotate this hydrogen over here. And I've gone from a staggered conformation right here to an eclipsed conformation here. And We'll, we'll, we're not going to touch on the energies just yet. I want to lay down all the staggered and eclipsed conformations, and then we'll evaluate the energies. For example, one, one thing we should note right off the bat is that this is going up in energy, right? We've gone from a staggered to an eclipsed conformation. So we went from an energy minimum to an energy maximum here. But whether it's the global maximum or a local maximum, we'll evaluate later. All right, let's continue with that same sense of rotation about the front carbon. Moving carbon 7 over to the left, the ethyl group up top, and the hydrogen to the bottom right. And we'll hit a staggered conformation first, here with the ethyl group in the top left. And so that was a rotation like this of 60 degrees. That's going to get us to this staggered conformation. If we continue that rotation, we get to another eclipsed conformation, where now the two ethyl groups are eclipsing each other. Carbon 1 is sitting directly on top of carbon 6, and carbon 2 directly on top of carbon 5, at least the way we've drawn the, the orientations of those ethyl groups. I just kept those consistent to make the drawings relatively easy to interpret. And we're going to continue around, swinging that ethyl group 
um, a little bit more so that now we're back at a staggered conformation. One thing to note about this is that the two ethyl groups are now in a gauche relationship to one another. And we could also say that this ethyl group is gauche to the methyl group as well. So this ethyl group has two gauche interactions, one with the methyl here and one with the ethyl group here on the front card. Finally, we're going to continue around one more time to generate one more eclipsed conformation where the ethyl group has rotated down here and the methyl group is eclipsing with this ethyl group here. So we've got an eclipsing interaction here and an ethyl H eclipsing interaction there. All right, so we've laid down all the staggered and eclipsed conformations and it's time to choose the ones that are highest and lowest in energy. So let's start with the lowest energy conformer. We're not even gonna look at the eclipsed conformers to do this, right? Because the eclipsed conformers are all energy maxima. The staggered conformers are the energy minima. And the thing that occurs to me here is that the ethyl groups are the bulkiest groups attached to this bond of interest. And so the lowest energy conformation should put those ethyl groups as far apart from each other as possible. Those should be in an anti-orientation in the most stable conformer. Which of these conformations has the, those ethyl groups in an anti-arrangement? Pause the video and see if you can figure this out on your own. All right. Well, if we look, for example, at this structure, we'll see that the two ethyl groups are in a gauche orientation. Check this out. That's a 60 degree dihedral angle between the two ethyl groups. So that one's out. Similar things going on with this conformer. We have a 60 degree dihedral between the two ethyl groups. These conformers are both gauche. The anti-conformer is this one. Notice I've got the two ethyl groups in an anti-orientation, 180 degree dihedral. This is the lowest energy structure because of this anti-relationship between the ethyl groups. For the highest energy structure, we're gonna look at the eclipsed conformers, and we wanna look for that structure where the bulkiest groups are eclipsing. And here it's those two ethyl groups. And the one that jumps out at me with this is this guy right here, where we noted that the two ethyl groups are eclipsing, zero degree dihedral between the two bulkiest groups in the molecule. This is gonna be associated with the highest energy structure. If we look at the other uh, eclipsed conformers, we'll notice that the ethyl groups are eclipsing smaller groups. For example, here we have an ethyl-methyl eclipsing interaction, not so bad as ethyl-ethyl. And we here we have an ethyl-H eclipsing interaction, which is definitely not so bad as an ethyl-ethyl eclipsing interaction. So the highest energy structure has those two bulky ethyl groups at a zero degree dihedral angle.